Welcome back. This video will focus in on testing triacs. There is a separate video you can see on SCRs. I was confronted with this problem of all these triacs and all these SCRs that these transistor checkers couldn't check. They couldn't supply enough power to trip on the gates unless they were really low-powered sensitive gate devices. Here we will be looking at triacs, and my test setup consists of this board, and a load is a, a light bulb. I will be taking readings from this voltmeter, and we will be discussing why you get the readings that you do. And this is a zero insertion force socket that sort of parallels that little socket up there. This is the schematic to the main control board. It has an input transformer. While this says it's 25 volts, my particular one measures 28. R1 is a 5K potentiometer that controls the gate current to either a tri uh, triac or an SCR. The load is a 24 volt lamp, and across the lamp is my di red digital voltmeter you saw earlier. Because we are testing triacs, actually what I have across the diode is a jumper. But if you either jumper or close S1, because you don't want the, if you leave S1 open, this thing will check like it's an SCR. And you will see why you can, use, you can actually use a triac as an SCR in some cases. But make sure this diode is either jumpered or this switch is closed. We will be using this triac, and in a later part of it, we will be explaining why we use this diac up here. This is our connections right here. T2 goes to the load. Gate goes back to the gate circuit. Remember, S1 is closed. And T1 goes to down here in, in the common. All right, this is an illustration, not exactly, but this is what a triac is internally. You could look at it as two back-to-back -back SCRs where the gates are tied together. One of the things that's revealed in the later part of the video under the live test is that the two halves of the triac don't cut on at the same voltage. I found that in multiple SCR um, triacs where half of it would cut on and it was acting more like a rectify acting like an SCR until the voltage was high enough to cut the second one on so it would act as a AC switch and not just a SCR. Let's just argue that, say, Q1 has a, needs a gate turn-on voltage of 20 volts, while Q2 needs a turn-on voltage of 28 volts. So there's go, as you adjust the potentiometer, you will see in the live demonstration, not only half of it comes on, and then when both comes on, we get full power transfer to the load. The solution to this is to put a diac into the gate circuit. Remember, this switch is closed. That's not there. It's either been jumpered or the switch is closed. What does this particular diac will trip on at around 30 volts? So as I adjust this on up and I'm approaching 30 volts on the gate circuit, the uh, diac will conduct. It has a negative conduction region. Once it starts conducting, its resistance goes to basically zero or zero, and the current will rush into the gate. Like I said, if one side of the triac tripped on at 20 volts and the other side tripped on at 28, when this trips on at 30 or 32 or whatever, it has enough current to cut both sides on simultaneously. So that's why you see this in triac circuits like lamp dimmers and so forth. It produces a much more stable, clean cut on. 
With that in mind, let's watch the live video. Quickly again, let's, do, let's observe what happens with an SCR. The meter is set for DC, if you can see that. The power is off. I'm going to plug in an SCR. An SCR, when turned on, of course, acts as a half-wave rectifier. So when I trip it on, all I'm going to do is get pulsating DC. That is not what I'm supposed to get on a triac. And it also tells me either one side of the triac is blown, and that is possible, or it's an SCR. I know it's an SCR by the part number. Let's observe how a triac is different. All right. Let's turn up the gate voltage. All right. The first problem we have is only half the triac is turned on, only half of it. It turns out that most triacs, the, two, uh, the gate voltage of one half is different than the other half. If I keep cranking it on up, you'll see the bulb get lighter when both sides are turned on. When it's f fully turned on, I got no DC at all. The light bulb's nice and bright. And if I go over to AC, there's the transformer AC, which is 28 volts. The reason you're seeing 27 is a volt is dropped across the triac. That's how that should be properly working. But what about this problem here, though? This could cause problems as I cut it back down. It's only half on. It's only giving you part of the voltage. If you had it on an oscilloscope, it would be chopped up. Let's go back to DC. And so note that the gate on a triac, often the firing voltages for the two halves is different. How do we get around that problem? There's a little device here with a jumper across it. I'm going to pull the jumper. And now in the circuit, and I'm going to come down here to my zero insertion force socket and insert the triac down there. The gate, uh, the gate current has to pass through the diac to get to the triac to trip it on. All right, what is a DIAC? As I'll explain more in the schematic explanations, it is a bilateral switch. It has to, the gate voltage has to get to a certain level before it trips on and dumps current into the gate of the triac. Below that, it just won't switch on, no gate current, no switch. No light, of course. The idea being, let's argue that half, that half of the triac will trip on at, say, 22 volts, and the other half trips on at 27 volts. If the diac trips on at 30, when it conducts, it should cut both of them on, and they should be pretty close together. If this was a switch instead of a potentiometer, both of them would snap right on. But if you turn it now, you'll find out bang. And you notice with the light bulb fully on, there's no pulsating DC. See how fast it tripped on together. And if we go over here to the AC side, that's how that should be properly working. 